Hello and welcome back to the Slaves of Mary channel. In this video, I'm going to prepare you for mental prayer and specifically St. Alphonsus's daily meditations and readings as a form of mental prayer. But before I begin posting the actual meditations and readings from St. Alphonsus, I want to read to you a few uh, summaries of you know what mental prayer is, how it works, etc. I'm going to post a link to a sermon that certainly does a much better job than I'm capable of doing from what I have found to be a very good and holy priest. Um, it's a YouTube video on you know sermons and how important mental prayer is and how to do it, what are the obstacles in our way, who can do it. It's called Mental Prayer is Essential for Salvation. So I'll post that down below in this video. So St. Alphonsus Liguori says it is morally impossible for him who neglects meditation to live without sin. Those are some compelling words. Let's listen to what St. Teresa of Avila explains about the concept. She does it so well. Quote, mental prayer is nothing else than an intimate friendship, a frequent heart-to-heart -heart with him by whom we know ourselves to be loved, unquote. So before we go into the method of making mental prayer, just a couple of notes that you should be aware of when we're doing the daily meditations and readings from St. Alphonsus, and something strikes you, stop and contemplate what struck you. Make acts of affection while you have that um, you know, item pop up in your mind. Right? And those acts of affection are, are acts of praise, of love and glory, of impetration, right? imploring God for uh, further grace to understand and uh, enact resolutions that will, in effect, enable you to put into action that item that struck you, that, that, that thought that came to your mind while you were praying. You also want to make acts of petition, right? We asked, we said impetration further to that is petition. Ask for, instance, the grace of divine love, something you should be praying for and asking for through the hands of Our Lady, Mediatrix of all grace, the Blessed Virgin Mary, every single day. Divine love, right? We don't want to be, um, you know, making resolutions and becoming fervent without divine love. Everything must put on charity. Uh, ask and petition for holiness, for instance, or thirst for souls. Um, as Our Lady instructed at Fatima, the conversion of poor sinners. Uh, make a petition asking for the grace of a holy death and a provided for death. Look into the Catholic concepts of unprovided for deaths, right? We don't base jump. We don't, unless we're drafted into the army or have volunteered into the military service, we don't jump out of planes for thrills because odds are you're testing God right? and he did not provide for that to be your death. So uh, ask for and petition God um, you know, for um, a holy death. Perhaps uniformity to God's will. Great book from St. Alphonsus Liguria that you can read about. That Jesus will reign in your mind, body, and will, heart, and entire soul. What you want to do is concentrate on a virtue or even one of your particular faults. Pray for the grace uh, to have, through the hands perhaps of your guardian angel, an understanding of your predominant fault, as well as your hidden pride. Pray for those two things. And then finish with a particular resolution. We'll get more into finishing and concluding. So let's let's so that, that those are sort of notes on what we're now we're going to go into the method of making you know mental prayer through the form that we're going to provide in this channel, St. Alphonsus Liguori's daily meditations and readings. So mental prayer consists of three parts. One, the preparation. To the meditation proper, which in our case will be St. Alphonsus's daily meditations and readings, and then three, the conclusion. 
So the preparation. Begin by disposing your mind and your body to enter into pious recollection. Leave outside the door of the place where you are going to converse with God all extraneous or distracting thoughts. It's not easy to do, but that's the intention. Saying with St. Bernard, quote, Oh, my thoughts, wait here. After prayer, we shall treat on other matters, unquote. Be careful not to allow the mind to wander where it wishes. The posture of the body, most suitable for prayer, is kneeling, but if this posture becomes so irksome as to cause distractions, we may, as St. John of the Cross tells us, make our meditation modestly sitting down. In the preparation, there should be three acts. One, an act of faith in the presence of God. Two, an act of humility and contrition for our sins. And three, an act of petition for light. We do this to offset the three great sins of the age. Blasphemy. Right? We want to have fidelity to God's grace and divine love. Number two, heresy. We want to be pure in doctrine. And three, impurity. We wish to be pure inside and outside. Be careful to make the act of faith in the presence of God well. For a lively remembrance of the divine presence contributes greatly to remove distractions. When a person is distracted in meditation, there's a reason to think that he or she has not made a lively act of faith at the beginning. The three acts should be made with fervor and should be short that we may pass immediately to the meditation. Okay, now for the meditation proper. When mental prayer is made in common, as in a community of religious, one person reads for the rest of the subject of the meditation and divides it into two parts. The first point is read at the beginning, after the prayers are said and the preparatory acts are made. The second point is read towards the middle of the half hour. One should read in a loud tone of voice and slowly, so as to be well understood. When you make your meditation in private, which I imagine most of us will be doing, you may, you know, make use of a good book and, and like we said, stop when you find yourself most touched. We're going to be using, as we know here, St. Alphonsus's works. St. Francis de Sales says that in, in this we should be as the bees that stop on a flower as long as they find any honey in it and then pass to another. We should stop at those passages in which we find the soul uh, gaining nourishment. St. Teresa used a book for 17 years in this way. She would first read a little, then meditate for a short while on what she had read, in imitation of the dove that first drinks and then raises its eyes to heaven. It should be remembered that the fruit of mental prayer does not consist so much in meditating as in making affections, petitions, and resolutions. So let's get into that. Affections. When you reflect on the point of the meditation just read and feel any pious sentiment, raise your heart to God and offer him an act of humility, of confidence, love, sorrow, gratitude, resignation, thanksgiving, and so on. The acts of love and contrition are the golden chain that binds the soul to God. An act of perfect charity is sufficient for the remission of all our sins, and it's very, very rare and we do not wish to rely upon it, but we know that it's there. And among the acts of love towards God, there is none more perfect than taking delight in the infinite joy of God, right? What we say, the greater honor and glory of our Lord, and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Praise be to his name. Number two, petitions. It is very profitable in mental prayer and perhaps more useful than any other act to repeat petitions to God asking with humility and confidence for his graces, for his light, the strength we need to do his holy will and to pray always, and especially the grace of perseverance and his holy love. As I said before, always ask every day for the gift of divine love, but also the gift of perseverance until the very moment of death through Our Lady and implore St. Joseph for this gift of perseverance as well. 
The Venerable Paul Signeri says that until he studied theology, he used to employ himself during the time of mental prayer making reflections and affections. But, quote, God afterwards opened my eyes, unquote. He says, quote, and thenceforward I endeavored to employ myself in petitions. And if there's any good in me, I ascribe it all to this exercise of recommending myself to God. Unquote. Do you likewise ask of God his graces in the name of Jesus Christ, and you will obtain whatever you desire. We just have to ask with confidence and with persistence and perseverance. Three, resolutions. It is necessary to make a particular resolution in the meditation, as for example, to avoid some particular sin or some defect into which you have more frequently fallen, to practice some particular virtue, such as to suffer the annoyance you receive from another person, something we can all relate with, I know I can, to obey more exactly a certain superior, perhaps at work, a boss, that is difficult, to perform some particular act of mortification, right, fasting, uh, a simple act of picking something up from the refrigerator that you th you'd like to have, and then putting it back, saying, I love you, Jesus, and thank you, Mary. The same resolutions have to be made several times until we find we have got rid of the defect or acquired the virtue. Afterwards, do not fail to reduce to practice the resolutions you have made as soon as the occasion is presented. You'll also do well to renew your vows, if that is applicable to your state in life, or any particular engagement you have made with God. This renewal is most pleasing to God. It, it multiplies the merit of the good work and draws down upon ourselves new help to preserve and grow in grace. So the conclusion. The conclusion consists of three acts. One, thanking God for the lights received. Two, making a firm purpose to keep our resolutions. And three, asking God for the sake of Jesus and Mary to give us the grace to be faithful to our resolutions. Now be careful never to admit the end of meditation to recommend to God the souls in purgatory and all poor sinners. St. John Chrysostom says, nothing more clearly shows our love for Jesus Christ than our zeal in recommending our neighbors to him. Okay, so a word about distractions. <clears throat> then we'll wrap up. One, distractions. Uh, of, of these, we must not take much account. It's enough to drive them away when they come. We really please God when we struggle against distractions. Because nothing happens without either the permissive or the positive will of God. And you should look into those concepts. And besides, even the saints suffered involuntary distractions, but they did not, on this account, leave off meditation. And so also we must act. St. Francis of de Sales says that if in meditation we did nothing but drive away or seek to drive away distractions, our meditation would be of great profit. I take great consolation in hearing that from our saint. Two, as for dryness of spirit, the greatest pain of souls in meditation is to find themselves sometimes without a feeling of devotion. Catholicism is certainly not a religion of feelings, just the opposite. It's a religion of the will, of a decision. Right? That's the definition of love, which is willing the good of another. It's not a feeling. Feelings fade and they can lead us astray, particularly when we're uh, distracted or in an emotional, over an overly emotional state. So, and with this is often joined the fear of being in the wrath of God through their sins, on account of which the Lord has abandoned them. And bringing in this gloomy darkness, they know not any way of escaping from it. For it seems to them that every way is closed against them. Let the devout soul then continue steadfast in meditation and not leave off, as the devil will suggest, your daily meditation. At such time, let it unite its desolation to that which Jesus Christ suffered on the cross. Let it repeat, my Jesus, mercy, Lord, have mercy on me. 
Have pity on me. Leave me not, O Jesus. Pray and doubt not that God will hear you and grant your petitions. So in conclusion, we thank God for this time to learn a bit about meditation and mental prayer. And we do so by thanking you, O Blessed Virgin Mary, for your intercession to the seat of God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And so we pray in nomine Patri, Fili, Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Ave Maria Grazia, Pana Dominus Tecum. Benedicta tu in mulieribus, and benedictus fructus ventris tui Jesus. Sancta Maria Mata Dei, or per nobis peccatoribus, nuc in hora mortis nostra. Amen. In nomine Patria, Filii, Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Bless you all, slaves of Mary.